Hello! In this video we will put our AGGO system right into the action. If you came here for construction details of the bubbler or the torch, I must disappoint you. But don't worry, I will talk about that in some of the next episodes. I am very impatient and I really want to try some welding. I am not expecting any good results. I only want to poke things and see what happens. Ok, so attempt number one. This is two mild steel square tubes and welding electrode. Here you can see my torch that is pretty bulky and the flame that it produces. The yellow color of the flame means that it's very contaminated and we will take a closer look later on in this video. Well, this weld is pretty crappy. It looks like that the filling material wasn't joined with the steel it should weld. So I repeated this experiment and tried to put more heat into the welded area. However, without any success. Maybe more heat is necessary and maybe there is some other problem. But the main problem is that I am not a welder and I am not sure, so... Our next attempt is brazing two stainless sheets with copper. However, this is not a proper brazing rod. It is a piece of electrical grade copper wire. You can see that I have switched from 1mm copper wire to 3mm copper wire because I could not feed the 1mm copper wire fast enough. And what would you tell? This joint looks very promising. But these sheets are deforming pretty badly due to excessive heating. Also, when I tried to pull them apart, almost no force was required. Here you can see the filling material in greater detail. It's quite porous, but not that much. Also, where the cross section is thin, you can break it quite easily. But if there's more material, it's quite stiff. And as you can see, it can be bent quite a bit. Although this profile is not very suitable for bend testing and such things, so... In this test, I cut out strip of stainless steel sheet, so it can be used as a wire. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but I found out that I cannot melt stainless steel. Instead of melting, it will turn into some unmeltable crystalline-like and brittle solid. Now, let's try something different. You may be familiar with this glass tube from our ozone generator videos. It's about 30 mm in diameter and with 2 mm wall thickness. I bought this tube so I can test if uh, I can process it with a propane torch. And I found that to split this tube into two pieces with propane torch I needed about 45 minutes of heating and that's pretty much. Unfortunately I have only small pieces of this tube so I cannot really stretch it because the flame of this torch is very very hot. As you can see, in about 45 seconds the glass is almost molten. Making glass reactors and coolers and stuff like this is the main reason why I built this HHO system. I want to make a video series of glass blowing with HHO torch. So if you like this kind of stuff, stay tuned. Here you can see some aluminum block with water droplets. These are here to demonstrate that there is no contamination that will affect the results of this experiment. Because the aluminum is very thermally conductive, we can use it to condense the products of the agage of flame. Obviously, only product should be water. However, as the agage of gas is bubbling through the sodium hydroxide solution, I will expect some sodium hydroxide contamination and this will also explain why the flame is so yellow. After I measured the pH of these condensed products, I was kinda surprised. It's acidic. The only thing I can think about why this is acidic is because sodium hydroxide may be contaminated with sodium chloride. And the products of sodium chloride electrolysis are chlorine and oxygen. As there is only pure water in the second bubbler, chlorine can react with water to form hydrochloric acid. If this is true, my new bubbler design should solve this problem or at least minimize it. I don't know how much this is an issue when welding. However, as I want to revisit bubbler construction and 
things like that, I will take a closer look at this problem, as I also want to test some support gases such as ethanol, acetone or even propane. A few days later I was thinking about broadcasting the rods that are designed to be used for brazing and welding. I bought four different materials and as last thing I want to do is take a closer look at two of them, brass and copper. Here I am trying to brace stainless steel with brass. I was thinking that if it worked with copper it should work with brass either. But I was surprised once again that when I heat the brass to the point where it melts, it explodes. I'm not sure if this is normal or not. I have talked to some welder and he said that this is because of the hydrogen atmosphere and well I don't think so. I also may try to use some flexes or acids to surface treatment. I have some borax and some hydrofluoric acid and other acids as well, so that should make brazing much easier. The last thing is copper on the mild steel. Well as you will see it will not stick together and I really should have done it on the stainless but anyways. Right now I am rather poking things and see what happens than some presentation. In the next video you may expect double construction, safety features, using torch with support gas, maybe some brazing that actually work or even welding, well possibly some other stuff. So see you next time.